Welcome everybody to one hour of miniature goodness and tonight we have the Goblins paint set. This is the Reaper Miniatures Goblins Quick Paint Kit. Now it's um, it comes with all sorts of goodies so I'll go through the kit first before we start. Um, what you get is a set of paints from Reaper, the M MSP paints. We've got Minotaur Hide, Bugbear Fur, Goblin Skin, Blade Steel, Saffron Sunset, Nightshade Purple, Heather Blue, and Buck scale, Buckskin Pale. Now, you also get six of the Bones USA Goblins. Now, I'm going to have to uh, sort out my uh, focus tonight. Here we go. It's going to be a bit of a difficult one because they are very, very, very small indeed. So, it could be quite tricky for you to actually see everything tonight they are very very small goblins as you can see if you see my thumbnail there we are tiny it's my thumbnail is bigger than the goblin uh, but we're going to put some paint on these now what i've done to start is i have used goblin skin which comes with a paint set and the whole six miniatures are painted with the goblin skin that is my primer coat and what i'll be working from now if you buy this paint set also inside you get a fantastic little easy um thank you for subscribing and thank you i think guys or gav subbed as well um you get a nice little quick paint guide by rodna bender now rodna bender is one of my favorite painters from reaper miniatures she paints every monday evening um i i, I try to raid her after my shows on a monday so um she did the, the paint guide but me being me, I'm not going to follow that paint guide. I am going to paint these uh, with the paints. We're going to only use the paints from the paint set. And we're going to use the pro paintbrush that came with the paint set as well. I don't know how we're going to get on using just one brush. But we shall give it a go. Now let me say hello to everybody in chat before we make a start. Um, I know my Scorpion is up there somewhere. Painterly Git. The Waffle Witch is in the house. Hello, Waffle Witch. Rod's in the house. Gareth the Star Wars Man's in the house. We have Tim's in the house. Hello, Tim. Um, we have uh, Ty's in the house. Ernie Hammer's in the house. Oh, I can't see anyone else. I can't see <laughs> And tell. <laughs> oh, my God. Every, every time. I love <laughs> You can just imagine it going, oh, you bastard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no, my eyes are watering now. Okay, I'm going to get some paint on the palette and we'll make a start. What I'm going to have to do, I'm afraid, is I'm going to have to keep the focus like this on the goblins. Um, so you might not be able to see exactly what I'm doing. Um, but what we're going to do is, as I said before, it's mainly skin tone on the, on these miniatures. So we'll work on those skin tones first. Um, and for the skin tones, what we're gonna use, because we've got the goblin, we've got the goblin skin on these uh, little goblins now. So we're gonna use Saffron, Saffron Sunset, and we're gonna use the Buck Scale uh, skin. <laughs> Tal's making me laugh now, oh my God. Hang on a second. <laughs> Calm down, Mikey. <laughs> Mm. 
Now, if I look really, if I look like there's hairs all over me, which there is, uh, you'll have to excuse me because what happened was my cat said she needed a cuddle before the show. And if my cat says she needs a cuddle before the show, she gets a cuddle. But the trouble is she's left all the hairs all over me. So I do apologize if I look a bit of a mess tonight. Hello, Stuart. <laughs> Time to leak it. <laughs> what I will say about paint set, about these paint kits. Now, many different companies do different paint sets and paint kits. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna carry on painting, and while I'm painting, um, I'll just carry on chatting. But um, many companies do the paint kits. Um, but what I what I what I don't understand is. Um, why don't um, the companies, instead of kind of making all these different paint sets with all these hundreds of different colors, why can't they just make a paint set that contains black, white, red, green, blue, and yellow? Because to be honest, that is all you need. That is all you need to kind of paint anything, um, apart from the silver metallics, of course. Uh, but it um, that's that is that would be the perfect the perfect starter paint set. Now, if Reaper watch this, which uh, they probably will, uh, one of them will probably watch this show. I would hundred percent recommend a paint set that contains all the basic colours and a white, a white and black, um, because that to me would be <laughs> the Goblin King molts. <laughs> That would be the actual perfect paint set. Just having all those, the core colours of, um, you know. I mean, it's like this this paint set now, it would be perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect. It needs, it needs, it needs, it needs a white. It needs a dragon white. Um, white and black, of course, are the colours you need to actually, um, you know, do all your highlightings. I mean, it's all fantastic having all the different colours. Don't get me wrong. I, I am totally addicted to um, buying paints. I got hundreds and hundreds of different paints that I love to collect and buy. Um, uh, but um, I just feel that um, all these paint sets definitely need to have a black, a black and a white actually added to the sets uh, because they just give you the dark shades and the light shades now what I'm doing here is I'm using the saffron sunset and what I'm doing is I am going very fast over all the flesh areas and I'm leaving a dark I'm leaving it on the highest areas like I normally do with my bigger miniatures um, so what happens here is I'm using that dark skin, um, goblin skin, as my dark highlight for the actual miniature. Um, and what we'll do then, once this is dried, we'll then go over with the buckskin, we'll go over with the buckskin, pale, and that'll be the final highlight for the skin on this little goblin. It's very, very simple to paint. Um, I won't be using any ink washes on these miniatures because of course the set doesn't come with ink washes now Rodna, Rodna Bender um, said on the little instruction guide there that um, you can actually um, add the brown and a little drop of water and um, that's exactly what we used to do years ago when I first started painting uh, we didn't have the ink washes when I first started um, so we used to mix up blacks and browns into our water and we would actually use that as our ink washes um, so and Ron, Ron the Bender she's old school like myself um, and it is possible and it does look okay to actually add water to a brown or black and use that as an ink wash but nowadays with all the ink washes you really don't need to go down that road uh, but for this actual paint set we are using 
all the paints only from the paint set. We uh, shall not be using ink washes, we shall not be using um, any little enhancements. We shall just use the paints that come with the set and we shall see how we can get these little gobbies to look. So like I say, what I'm doing, I'm just going over the whole of the miniature um, quite heavily with the actual um, saff uh, Saffron Sunset, very fast, little speed paint for you guys. Uh, and we're just adding a nice little tone over the skin. And as you can see, that brown is coming through nicely and I want that to come through because then a final highlight will be with the box skin pale. Um, um, very, very simple. Um, I will say one other thing. I'm on, a, I'm on a major, major chatting session tonight. I've got lots of things in my head. Who on earth decided to paint goblins yellow? <laughs> Come on, guys. What's <laughs> what's going on with the yellow goblins? Eh? <laughs> what's going on with the yellow goblins? Now, I am a green goblin guy, okay? My goblins, all my life, ever since I was a little kid, they've been green. When did they start changing colour? <laughs> Jaundice. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I think um, in Dungeons and Dragons, um, I've going through. I was going through all the manuals and stuff um, because I was getting quite confused why all the goblins are changing colours. I know if you got cave goblins, they'll have a darker green. Now I was looking. What the with the goblins from Dungeons and Dragons, I, I've noticed they are yellow, but it's, a, it's, a, it's more of a, a greeny yellow. It's more of a greeny yellow, I'd say. Uh, so there's still a little bit of green in the mix with the goblins. But, uh, I don't know. I, I, I gobl Goblin green is goblin green in my book. I don't know if you guys out there think the same. Classic D&D from the 80s, they were orange tan. I didn't know that. HM Road Dog, thank you for saying that. I did not know that. Um, that's good to know. It, and it's also great to have old school players in the house. Uh, Tal. <laughs> I have yellow gobbos, blue and of course green. Even shades of pink. Blue and pink goblins. Tim. Tim. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tim, post. You'll have to post some pictures on Discord or Twitter, uh, show, showing the uh, the blue goblins and stuff. Uh, maybe you've done it in the past. I, I don't remember seeing them. I painted some blue the last year. Now, okay, wh wh what's with the blue goblins then? And now, now I'm even more concerned. Blue goblins. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the tribe region. Yes, I, I, I know, like I say, with the cave goblins, um, they're going for a nice darker grey type effect. Um, I think what it is, I, I just I, I just like green goblins. I, I, it's just my own personal thing. Uh, but uh, I can understand the different tribes, that's for sure. But my favourite goblins, my favourite goblins, I think, are the Pathfinder goblins with the little sharp pointy teeth. Um, Pathfinder goblins are very, very cool. Now, I haven't played Pathfinder a lot. Um, I have played it a few times. Um, but, uh, of course, D&D kind of became the mainstream thing for me. Now, I have only been playing... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons since fifth edition, since fifth edition. So I am I am a newbie compared to most of you old school players out there. So you'll have to excuse me if I do make mistakes saying about things about Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I do not want to step on anybody's toes. <laughs> Oh, of course you're you're my favourite goblins. Oh my, there's no there's no there's no doubt on that. But Gareth, you're not made of plastic, and I'm not going to go over there and paint you green, am I? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Is, is, has, uh, have I got a bad um, sound tonight, guys? Is the sound okay? I can see someone said they've lost video. Uh, with, um, with my sound on this channel, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Um, there's nothing I can do about it, I'm afraid, guys. Um, it's internet connection and Twitch. Um, I have tried my best to have a broadcast with the best uh, sound possible. Black Cat Dice, thank you for following. Now, talking of f people following me, I am getting very, very close to that 700 follower giveaway. Now, if you look above me there, um, that is a full-on painted dragon from Reaper Miniatures. Um, that is going to be given away on stream uh, once I re reach 700 followers. Um, and every 100 followers after that, I shall be doing another giveaway. So every 100 followers, I normally give away a nice big painted mini. And that's posted anywhere in the world, free of charge. And everybody will be entered into a, a wheel of pain, which uh, my scorpion spins. Um, and that's given away to whoever. Whoever. Now... Again, it is a very, very small miniature to paint tonight. Uh, my cameras aren't the best. I am getting a new camera set up soon. So hopefully we'll have a better, sharper, closer picture. And I won't need to do all the zooming in and out. Um, but of course, it still costs money to do all these things. Um, at the moment, um, I think the picture quality is very good. But it's not fantastic from, for doing the, the close-up shots of my miniatures, especially when we get so tiny. Um, so I hope this is okay for you guys. Thank you, Ernie Hammer. Um, let me just give me give a little shout out to Tim while he's in chat. Um, I, I, it's awesome that you're popping in, Tim. I know you're working all the time. Um, but uh, it is really, really appreciated that you pop on and say hello. Um, I know, in fact, many of you, many of you have got to a quality in painting. Um, and I'm talking directly to Tim and Gareth. Um, you guys are all at a stage in painting where you don't need to really watch my shows. You've got to a stage where you kind of advance in past what I'm teaching people. Uh, but the fact that you're popping in to say hello and watch the show um, really means a lot to me. Um, so thank you so much, both of you. <laughs> yeah, the picture's good, thank you. <laughs> I was, that's why I was laughing. That's why I was laughing. I was, wait, I, was wait, I was waiting for Tal to start crying. I get abused. Dude, okay. Let me let me tell you something very special about Tal. Um, Tal and I have been friends for I'm gonna I'm gonna say many years now. It's been it's been a fair old few years. Maybe may, that's maybe six years. Maybe I don't know. It's been a long time anyway, and I've put up with him. <laughs> and, I, and I've put up with him for all this time. Now, I'll tell you what's really special about Tal is he's an absolutely fantastic friend, but he's also a, an amazing dungeon master. But Tal doesn't paint. He's never painted a miniature. Um, he's not interested in painting. I've offered to send him unpainted minis. I've offered to send him a paint set. Um, and he's he's refused. He's too busy. He he writes Dungeons and Dragons campaigns, and um, he just he's just not interested. But my point is, my point is, he doesn't paint, but he's on every single one of my shows. He's he might miss one or two shows, but every single show he turns up and he's there. I mean, I can't ask for a better friend to support me than that. I mean, for somebody who doesn't paint miniatures, but he still pops on and says hello and pisses me off. It's, you know, <laughs> you can't ask for more. 
But yeah, I mean that's that's what friends are for. That's what friends do. Okay, so what we've done now so far is we've added all that lovely that lovely saffron sunset to all these miniatures. And what I've done, I've utilised the goblin skin, the goblin skin, which was our base coat. Um, so we're just letting that dry a little bit more. We'll just check if we missed anywhere. It's a very very simple covering. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to start mixing paint. Now. I'm, I know this is a beginner's paint set, but I'm painting these miniatures how I want to, but using the paints. So what we're going to do now, using the same brush, because I'm going to use the same brush through the whole of what I'm painting, so it just proves you can paint your miniatures with what's in the set. What I'm doing is I'm adding some of this sun, uh, saffron sunset to my tissue, and I'm going to go half of the buckskin pail and start mixing that into the buckskin pail on the tissue here. So it's not pure buckskin pale, it's a 50-50. And what we're going to do is we're going to start highlighting the skin now and going over the skin that we just went before, just a little bit lighter. And this will start really bringing out the actual flavors of all the skin. Again, we're just going over to the highest areas, nice and fast. Just picking out the top of the ears, top of the head there, which is on the tummy, going across the hands, keeping the dark recesses for the eyes of course so we've got the eye sockets are nice and dark now again this set doesn't come with white um, so I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna get those eye sockets painted uh, I'm sure I shall work something out so what we're doing is going lighter and lighter with these skin tones over the goblin uh, just really fast and simple and just making it highlighting like so, uh, it's looking fab already. Um, again, it's just 50 50. So we've got 50% 50 50 of the buckskin pale mixed in with 50% of the saffron. Just on my tissue, I'm taking it off my brush there, and we're just moving around this miniature, going to the highest areas. We've already added one layer. This is the third layer already. Um, so it's very, very fast. Making sure the tops of the ears tops of the muscles and uh, just along the the old uh, hand there and the thigh just go along the thigh back of the calf muscle and it's simple as that to get a lovely looking skin okay and now we go to the next one Again, 50-50 mix. Again, going straight on. Keeping all the recesses nice and dark. Um, like I say, I'm not using an ink wash on this miniature, so we're utilizing the paint to our advantage. We're making sure that very first layer is coming through on the on the goblin. Uh, we just highlight the tummy there. You don't need ink wash. Ink wash is uh, a fantastic thing, um, and I highly recommend it if uh, you're a beginner painter. Um, this set will do you proud to actually paint your little miniatures up, but I would recommend getting yourself a black ink wash, a brown ink wash. You want the black paint and you want white paint, and uh, I would recommend getting um, the Dragon White and Dragon Black by MSP Paints. Um, and for the ink washes, um, you can go for any company for the ink washes. Um, I would recommend uh, the um, Agrax Earthshade and I would recommend the Nun Oil from Games Workshop. Um, I use those ones because of the large pots mainly. Uh, but Reaper Miniatures do also, do also do a brown ink wash and they also do a black ink wash as well. Uh, but that comes in an 18 millimeter dropper bottle. Okay, moving on to the next one. So we're just, like I say, we're going to the highest areas of our mixture. I'm going to call it. Um, I'm going to call it the mixture of yellowish, yellowy gold. Now, because these miniatures are so small, 
Um, what we're trying to do is get the maximum highlight uh, with minimal effort. Um, because they're so small, you're not going to see tons and tons of detail. What we're trying to do is make sure there's a color color combo going on the head and on the tones of the flesh. So we're working mainly making sure that the head has got the highest highlights. Um, because of course, every time you look at a miniature, the first thing you look at on any miniature is the head of the miniature. Uh, so of course, that's going to take your eye to begin with. So we make sure the face is done as best as possible and the rest of the miniature will just follow through nicely. Like I say, these are absolutely tiny little miniatures. Um, these are probably the smallest miniatures I've actually painted on my show to date. Um, now, I normally paint larger miniatures because um, it's easier for you to see what I'm up to. Um, like I say, once I get a better camera set up, uh, then we can start going on to smaller miniatures. Uh, but doing my large dragons and monsters and giants um, and making gaming boards, etc., um, makes it a lot more easier for you guys to actually see how I'm painting and what I'm doing. Um, I haven't got the same setup as like Reaper Miniatures Pro Painters have with all the special cameras and everything. Um, so um, it does make it quite difficult for you to guys to see close up work. But I am trying my best. Now I am painting very very fast today as well. I just want to try and get all this skin done on these miniatures before the hour's up so I can give you an idea of how nice these little minis can start looking with minimal effort. <laughs> Flavors of skin. I can't help it. I, I Ty, I can't help it. I, I was a chef for 30 years. Everything I do has got flavors in it. <laughs> That's what I tried to do, Stuart. I, um, as long as I can kind of explain what I'm doing and you all understand, um, then hopefully, like I say, my mission, my mission is to hopefully get you all painted apart from Tao, of course, um, and enjoying what you're doing and trying to show you ways that are very, very simple uh, but give a very effective finish to your miniature. Um, now, if I can do that, then, like I say, my mission is accomplished on the show. I mean, I know um, I am not paint. I am painting for a tabletop gaming standard, as, as I'd call it. Um, but that doesn't mean you, you can't have a very nice looking miniature painted. Um, and what I'm trying to do is paint the thousands of miniatures I have, and your miniatures of course, um, without spending days and days and days on one miniature. Um, I mean, when I was younger, or when I used, used to enter competitions for painting, um, I, I, I could spend weeks or months on a diorama or just one miniature. Um, but if I did that with every single miniature, we wouldn't get, uh, we wouldn't get our armies painted, would we? <laughs> we wouldn't get the job done. <laughs> Hello, Volio14. How are you? It's nice to see uh, new faces. Uh... I've noticed um, the my Twitch channel in the last couple of weeks. Um, my numbers, my numbers have been going up um, nice. Um, I, I, I can see I got like thirty people um, watching the show at the moment. Um, anywhere from for me on my Twitch show, anywhere between fifteen to twenty-five Twitch watchers is phenomenal for me. I, I, it's just amazing. 
Uh, but when I see numbers like that where it goes up to 30, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> I must be doing something. <laughs> okay. Now this paint set again is from Reaper Miniatures. Um, it does come with the Bones USA miniatures as well. It comes with a, a Reaper Pro paintbrush, which I'm using here, um, and it also comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, eight paints at the paint them. I had to count those paints because there you go. Um, now I had, there is a link. There is a link below my show to Reaper. Um, if you're interested in buying one of these sets. Okay, this is really starting to look nice now. I don't know if, uh, let's see if we can get a bit closer. Can you, all, can you all see these guys? Can you all see these okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over one more layer. I'm going to go over one more layer now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go really just mainly just buckskin pale and just pick out the details. But I need to wash my brush first. Thank you the Waffle Witch. I'm still waiting on the pictures of waffles, by the way. <laughs> okay, now just to finish off the skin for these little tiny, weeny, weeny little miniatures, I'm just going straight into the buckskin pail. And what we're going to do is just highlight, we're just going to highlight certain places of the miniatures just to kind of finish the skin off. Um, and that will be the forehead. Like so, the tips of the ears, tops of the chest there, the top of his little shoulder, and the muscles going down his arm, and the top of the thumb, the same here on the wrist, and the top of the hand, and a tiny weeny weeny bit on his tummy, just there. And the top of the thigh, there we go, and just on the back there, on the kneecap and that is the skin tone done completely for that goblin perfect and we'll do the rest quickly um, let me just check how we're doing for time ah, we're doing time uh, speed up Mikey speed up okay oh I forgot his nose just the tip of his nose as well there you go a little bit of his nose and his cheeks. A little bit on the cheek there. A little bit on the cheek there. Top of the ears. Again, I am working the skin tones like there's a light source. So the light source is kind of sh shining directly down from this miniature and hitting all the top areas of the skin. And this is where I am adding the final touches so on the back of the head there a little bit on the top back of this one again on the ears shoulders top of the thigh and the back of the calf muscles very very simple once you get into a routine and you learn kind of where the light falls on your miniature um, you just imagine just imagine there's a sun above your miniature directly above your miniature uh, so that light is shining directly down onto your miniature so all you're doing is picking out the areas which will be shadow and light so the light source shining down on this little miniature here is going to be the top of his head so we make sure he's got the brightest point on the top of his head his little ears a little bit of light on the ears there. It'll be hitting the top of his nose. So we add a little bit to the top of the nose. Onto the cheekbones. So we add a little bit to the cheekbones. 
And even his little, he's got a little pointy chin, so he'll have a little bit of light on there. And of course, we got the shoulder pads, uh, shoulder pads, his shoulders, and his arm there, and the top of the hands, just a little bit around the top of the hands, going down, down to the wrist. Now, what you'll find is I'm not painting the underside. Um, again, I'm utilizing the brown that we used to begin with as a shade for these goblins. So what's happening in, is we're getting a natural shade just by painting directly down onto the miniature. And we're getting a lovely effect of shadow and light from those goblins. So these three goblins are looking absolutely fab. So moving on to the next one. Again, light source going straight down. So we get the top of the head. That's our lightest point. And the top of the ears. His little ears are glowy now. Little glowy ears. Top of the nose. As the sun's hitting his nose and the cheeks there. A little bit on the chin. And again, following down over the shoulder. Just going around the top of the hands. Onto the biceps. Onto his wrist. And just hitting those fingers there on the sword. Again, we now go on to the back, and of course his back is raised, so the top of the back is going to get a little bit of light source. So there we are, that's the highest area. And we, what we'll do is we'll just take it down a notch. Just take it down, just there, onto his shoulder blades. That's all we need, perfect. A back of the thigh there, a little bit of light there. Same again on this one top of the shoulder blades just a, the highest brightest area a little bit on top of the head there and just moving it down the shoulder blades a little bit and over the thigh and the top of the ears we're done now I just need to wash my brush my paint's drying quite fast today Painterly get oh awesome stuff. They are they are absolutely fantastic kits. I mean the the Bones USA miniatures um, are my favourite Bones miniatures now. Um, the detail on them is absolutely phenomenal for plastic. Um, my what I like about these as well. Oh by the way, these are all Bobby Jackson miniatures. Uh, Bobby Jackson uh, miniatures. Um, but what I like about these um, miniatures as well is these are the Dungeon Dwellers. Now the Dungeon Dwellers are my favourite line from Reaper. Um, thank you for following, Jekyll. Um, they're my favourite. They, they, they've started doing these little oval bases. Um, and there's something really cute about them. But they're nice. They're all... The symmetry is perfect for these miniatures. The old miniatures, see, they used to have the bases on the miniatures where they'd all be a little bit cut off. They ju just they wouldn't be a fixed bottom, so I had to always add a base boss base just to make them fit onto the one inch bases and look nice. Um, but now they now they are really doing well with these bases. I'm very very pleased with them. Um, don't get me wrong, I shall still be adding bases to all my other miniatures. Uh, but there's no need to add bases to these ones. Okay, let me carry on chatting away. I've got getting lost track there. Again, we're working with the light source on this miniature. The light source shining down, and that's why we're making the actual miniature. I'm um, utilizing the dark brown that we used to begin with. So again, top of the fire there. This, this, this little goblin is just kneeling down. And as you can see, just by adding that little bit of extra light source, it really starts bringing our little gobos to life. And you can copy this paint scheme like I'm doing and do it exactly the same in any color you want to. Now, you can do it like Tim says, in pinks and blues. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter what color scheme you want your goblin. Um, just use the same type of type type of technique as I'm doing here and you'll get the same effect for the goblin skin it won't make any difference what colors you use 
it's just the way it's just the technique of how to paint these goblins the same okay so for the final two goblins here with the skin again we're going back to the top of the head just adding a little bit of light source to the top of the shoulders just going around that's a boot there and the same in the last one here Like I say, it's a super fast speed paint on these miniatures um, and they're still looking very, very nice. Uh, and for the size of these miniatures, to get any form of detail um, um, is quite going to be quite difficult. It's going to be quite difficult. Like I say, that's my thumbnail. You can see my thumbnail. The miniature is the same size as my thumbnail. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, they're small. They're small. Yes, Nath, um, I have got no intention of adding any bases to the Dungeon Dweller line. Um, I'm very, very happy with these bases, and I hope um, I hope Reaper carry on with these type of bases for the Dungeon Dweller line, because um, they've all got the, like, the cobblestone bases, so perfect for dungeons and anything like that. Okay, so... This is our skin tone for today. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start moving on to the different colours. Uh, let's see what the time is. We haven't got much time, but uh, we shall uh, do a little bit more on these goblins. But as you can see, what I wanted to show you today was how simply you can paint the skin tones on these goblins using the paints provided in the kit. So all those skins to me are finished. Now, of course, you can add an ink wash, but what I've done is I've tried to paint these in a way where you don't need to add ink wash. I'm trying to paint these using a set where we're not adding any washes at all. Um, so I'm just trying to show you, you don't actually need to add an ink wash if you don't want to. Okay, right, moving on. Let me just have a little drinky of my Ribena. My throat is a little bit dry today. Thank you, Gareth. Um, and I, again, Gareth, I did miss your stream. I'm afraid I was fast asleep. I have, um, I don't know if you saw the picture of my, uh, my trike, my little, my, my bicycle trike. I've started going training every day. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, thank you for subscribing, uh, Nath. I've started going training every day on, I got a new trike. It's like a, um, it's a push bike, one of these battery, battery assist trikes. Um, and even with the battery assist, um, it's still a lot of work for a 50 plus year old. Um, so what's happened is I've been doing this intense training, <laughs> intense training, going on my bike to the cookie, to the cookie shop. <laughs> but of course, um, I'm absolutely wrecked. I've never done so much exercise in my life. I normally go on the Harley Davidson, you know, so actually cycling. Um, anyway, so I, my my well, my point is, I was fast asleep and I missed your show. <laughs> oh, you bastard! <laughs> Tal. <laughs> okay, right. Let's go on to the next bit. Okay, let's have a look at these little goblins on the picture and see what's next. Okay, now as you can see. With the goblins that Rod the Bender has painted, um, she has used, um, she's got some white in there. So she's obviously used paint that's not in the set. Uh, but that's that's fine, That's I mean, that's quite normal. This is for a sell, selling point of view. What we'll do is we'll start moving on to the little, little capey things there. Uh, so we've got some nightshade purple and some heather blue. So what we'll do is we'll do minute little wet blending to get that effect we need so what we'll do is we'll get on some nightshade purple hello renegade shank renegade shank are you up for some lord of the rings online later are you up for some questing <laughs> Mm 
Now this is nightshade purple, which I've just squirted all over myself. Um, now it looks like it's black, but it's not black. It's actually got a very light hint of purple in it. Now I've got a little bit on the palette there. As you can see, I've just got it all over the bottle. <laughs> and we've got some heather blue. Now, this is going to be quite tricky for a wet blend because we're using black. Uh, so, what we'll do here is... Where's my brush gone? Here it is. What we'll do is start on the back, back of these little tunics here. Now, this is going to be very difficult for you guys to see, but what I'm going to do is, in fact, I'll let this get a bit closer so we can really get in depth with what we're doing. Now, what Rhonda Bender does is she would paint, she would paint this all black first and then add the, then add the blues afterwards and start blending that in with layers. What we're doing on these ones is what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go around the belt buckle here just quickly follow the belt buckle and we're still using the same massive brush so it's quite tricky and what we're going to do here to get our effect of the blue is that black is still wet so I am going to just go straight into that heavy blue and I'm going to add it to the black and start pulling it down the tunic Mix in the black and pull it down just a little bit. And what we'll do is then add a little bit more blue for the bottom of the tunic, which will be lighter now. And we'll go to the final effect, right to the bottom, which we've got just pure heather blue. So what we got there, I don't know if you can see that, but just by using that black, I've I've done a wet blend from black. It's gone into dark blue to lighter, lighter, lighter. And that's a very, very fast way to get the same effect that Rhonda Bender did on her goblins uh, where she's done a layer. So what I'm just showing you is another way to actually do the little tunics um, doing a wet blend, which is a lot faster. Um, but again, it does, take, it does take a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. Um, I'll show you again. Well, I'm going to show you on all these little miniatures. Again, make sure your brush is nice. I'm using the actual brush that came with the set as well, by the way. So it just proves you can actually do some nice work with the same brush. Again, we just go across the belt at the top. We've got a nice little layer of black. Now, while that layer of black is still wet, we go into the heather blue and what we do is we add the heather blue to the top and we just pull it down a little bit taking some of that wet black down the tunic so we're pulling that black down pulling that black down we're not going up on the brush what we're doing is we're keeping that brush going down the same way every time we're just pulling the black down into that blue and then we go back into the blue and we just add that just keep it going down back into the blue and a little bit more and once more to the tip and there you go so what you got there is you've got the lightest blue at the bottom and it goes to the nice dark on the top there very very simple and fast to do so i'll just carry on with this Thank you, Waffle Witch. It does take a little bit of practice, um, so don't um, don't stress if um, you're, you find the paint runs. Um, the key to wet blending is not to overload the brush um, and not have paints that are too watery. Um, again, what we're doing is we're just adding the black to the top of the top of the belt here. So we've got the black. We're just adding the blue now. Now, I, I haven't even washed my brush, so I'm going directly with the same brush. I still got black on the tip of my brush. 
so that's important um, and we're just pulling the blue from the black down and that gives your blue an instant dark highlight then we're going again directly back into the blue adding that to our next layer pulling that down back into the blue pulling that down and then again once more final highlight is the highest blue right at the bottom and you've got yourself a lovely shade going from dark blue to light blue just by using that one color <laughs> don't be wet just be moist yes with <laughs> <laughs> with wet blending the most important thing of course is to keep your paint uh, moist as Gareth <laughs> said in chat <laughs> okay carrying on um, it looks like well, what we'll do is we'll get the tunics finished um, and then we shall be wrapping it up for the day because our hour is almost upon us um, again thank you every single one of you for popping on and watching this show um, it means so much to me um, this uh, I do enjoy painting it's my the love of what, what I do um, and I hope I do inspire a few people to paint the miniatures or give you ideas or you just leave thinking you've thank you for following deranged penguin <laughs> that's an awesome name <laughs> deranged penguin I like that Now, um, tomorrow, I am back uh, streaming my Lord of the Rings miniatures tomorrow. Now, last week, I couldn't stream because there was issues with my neighbours, <laughs> because they're too noisy. <laughs> but what it is tomorrow, um, I was going to be carrying on with my uh, Fell Beasts, which I will be showing you the Fell Beasts. Um, but what it is, um, one of my goblins... Um, his um, his son wanted some Rohan Rohan miniatures, and um, I can't say no. I can't say no to a little boy. Can I have some Rohan miniatures, Daddy? So I'm gonna say so tomorrow. <laughs> so tomorrow for James McCoy for James James McCoy's son, I'm going to paint um, the Rohan Rohan miniatures from Lord of the Rings. And I'll send them off to him. Um, hopefully that'll get him into the hobby. And uh, we'll have another little goblin in the future. <laughs> I will be finishing off the uh, fell beasts. So please don't to think I'm not going to do them. My trouble is, I'm one of these guys, I'm one of these guys that can't help it and um, I just like to be nice to people. Uh, I, I, it's probably why I got friends like Tal, uh, because I'm so nice to you, Tal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last tunic for the evening, again, going with the black. And just adding that blue. Like I say, it, it is very, very difficult with the camera. I hope you've been able to see something of what I'm doing tonight. I know I'm trying to talk f talk through what I'm doing as much as possible, but it is quite difficult when there's such tiny miniatures. So, okay, let me recap what we've done tonight. Okay, so what we did with all the skin tabs. Um, so, this is the Goblin Quick Paint Kit from Reaper Miniatures. Um, it comes with eight paints. It comes with six awesome little goblins. These are the goblins, the, the Bones USA goblins, which are very high detailed plastic miniatures. Um, and then, of course, you get the eight paints. Um, so, what I did to begin with 
before the show, I painted all the miniatures with goblin skin that comes in the paint set. So they all had their goblin skin. And then we moved on to Sunset Saffron. Now this was our first tone for going over all the flesh areas of our goblins. Um, and then what we did, we did a 50-50 mix of Buckskin Pale and Saffron Sunset. Um, and then we went over all the goblins again. And then we went straight into the Buckskin Pale and added all those lovely little highlights on each of the miniatures. Like so. Very simple to do. Um, and of course, for the last part for the evening show, um, we've done a little bit of wet blending on these cloaks. And that's very, again, very simple. We've started off with black, um, which actually not black, I shouldn't say black, it's actually nightshade purple. Nightshade purple. So we started with a nightshade purple, and then added our heather blue, and started pulling that paint down to give a lovely effect going from dark to light on all the little capes on these tiny weeny little goblins. <laughs> so there we are. That's all I have for you for tonight. Um, the time is definitely about upon us. Um, I want to thank every single one of you for popping into the show. Um, it's very, very nice to have all these people watching. My numbers are going up, seems to be all the time now. Um, and that's just crazy and awesome and nice. So thank you so much for that. Thank you to all the followers and everybody else and the cheers. Um, so love to every single one of you. I hope I see you tomorrow night. Um, if not, I will be back doing Reaper Miniatures on Monday. Um, so until then, I shall say goodbye. You take care, everybody. Love to all. <laughs>